the drawer slides. Make sure you 220 sand grit. <laughs> the entire thing right in front of you. That was stupid. What's up guys, it's Mark. It is so hot today. I think it's 96 degrees. So I wanna film this and get back in the house and the air conditioner. Now, if you've been following our channel, you know that the last video we released was how we built this cabinet. We took you through all the construction process of it. Now today was going to be a follow-up to that. We were gonna install drawer slides and face frames and things like that. But there's a lot of good videos already on YouTube about how to do things like that. What we couldn't find was a good concise video on how to cut the butcher block countertop for an undermount sink to finish it and things like that. And I think ours came out really, really nice. So we're gonna unwrap the butcher block. We're gonna finish it. We're gonna cut it for the undermount sink. We're gonna install the sink. And this is what it's gonna look like. So stick around. So I'm trying to think of the tool that I need to cut through this big piece of really hard butcher block. And I am thinking this is not it. I am not good enough with this. I'm sure somebody out there is a Picasso with this can, can cut really fine curves. Um, I don't see it. I think it'll come out okay at best. I'll have to do a ton of sanding and it'll still bug me because it, be, it won't be great. Um, but this would be good for getting most of the work done. But I think this would be really good. This is a router bit um, and it is a half inch shank. So this is a really powerful router bit. I've got a corded router that I could use this in. What this is missing is a little bearing, a, a little collar. Um, so what I would do is I would get one that has a collar on it and basically you ride that collar around a frame or a form and it follows that. Um, and the, uh, this makes a ton of dust. So what I would do is I would probably go right up to the cut line with this and just leave a tiny little sixteenth of an inch remaining and then I would use a form to cut away with this and that should be perfect if I get the uh, template correct. So I figure I will use this as my template and this should work really well. The router guide can uh, go across here. The only other thing we need is to figure out what to do in these corners because I don't want it to be a sharp corner, I want it to be a nice curve. So I came up with this idea and let me show you how it works. So what you're essentially trying to make are these things. So basically a right angle and then a quarter of a circle on the inside. The way I did it was I used my drill press to, there's a huge hornet flying around. All right, I used my drill press to cut a two inch circle in some one by six lumber and I put it right in the middle of the lumber because I wanted to have some grab room on either side of the hole because I'm gonna have to run it through the table saw after that. So I cut a couple holes in one by six lumber and then I ran, the ran it through the table saw just so the blade touched the outside of the circles. And if you do that in all four sides, you end up with four of these for every circle that you cut. So I've got about 12 of them and I'm gonna see which four fit the best and then what I will do is, instead of having a corner, we will have a circle, which once I file, once, once I sand down, will hopefully be a nice transition into it, and the, and the uh, router blade can run, or the router guide can run right along that um, template. So we're gonna try. And this, my friends, is the result after gluing. So we kind of use those wheel pieces that were left over to push the corners in, and we use some of these extra blocks to make sure everything was tight against the frame. And now I can probably take these away and hope they haven't been glued in place, which sounds like that one has, crud. All right, so that's what that looks like. And now I will have to sand this to be, 
because we want this to be completely smooth so when the router bit passes, it doesn't jump on this edge. We want it to be completely smooth. So we'll have to spend a little time sanding this, but at that point, we should have something that the router bit can go across and cut the outside edge of the hole for the sink. So here's the plan. We're gonna, we just got our butcher block um, yesterday. It's still in the shrink wrap. We are gonna unwrap it. Once you unwrap it, by the way, you've only got 48 hours to finish it. I don't know why, I don't know if the butcher block police show up or what happens, but apparently you're supposed to finish it within 48 hours. So we're gonna unwrap it. We're gonna cut it to length. Then we're going to cut the hole for the undermount sink and get the undermount sink uh, install that is the goal for today so let me show you what you need to get that done so you obviously need your butcher block this is a rubber wood piece of 25 by I think this is 72 we really don't need only need like 42 inches but it's the smallest one we could find so we've got that you're gonna need some you're gonna need a tape measure you're gonna need a pencil or something to write with and you're gonna need a bunch of stuff to figure out square from not square You'll need some clamps to hold down the piece that your saw is going to ride against. You're going to need a some kind of jig to route your um, hole for your undermount sink. Tools you're going to need, you're going to need a router, and this has a half inch shank top bearing flush mount bit in it, brand new, never used it before. We've got a jigsaw, we'll use that to start the hole for the, um, for the undermount sink before we route the edges. You'll need a circular saw with a nice blade in it to cut through the uh, butcher block. You'll need some safety gear, some clamps, and that is about it. So we are unwrapping this butcher block. So sad, it's gonna be cut in half. So pretty. It's like Christmas morning. So you saw we had to do a little flippage. There is a the, it definitely comes with a, a, a bottom and a top side. This is definitely the top, but there's a scratch right here. It looks like actually a glue mark. We don't know if it's gonna come out. So we're gonna use this end, because this end is nice and smooth. Yeah, this should be nice. So we've got to cut this thing to, the cabinet is 41 and 1 8 inches we want to leave an inch and a half overhang on the end so we're going to cut this at 42 and 5 8 inches so the first thing we're going to do is draw a line at 42 and 5 8 by the way this whole video you're going to hear cicadas because they are in force today they are everywhere so you're going to hear this whirring of cicada wings I see, I don't know if the wings, I don't know what it is, but you're gonna hear them all over the place. Yeah, and it's hot, so we're gonna try to get this done quick. So we've drawn a line at 42 and 5 8 inches, and now I know the, di the distance from the edge of the saw base to the blade is exactly five inches. So we're gonna draw another line five inches away. And we're gonna clamp a straight edge. Which side is straight? I think this side is straight. That's that straight. We're going to clamp a straight edge to here so that we can ride the fat, ride the saw right along this thing and it makes a perfect cut. So we'll make sure it's square. All right, with that all in place, we are ready to do some cutting. Connie did the last one, so I guess I will do this one. You want me to do it or you want to do it? You did it so well last time. Sure. Connie is going to do it. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to reposition the saw horses so that we don't cut through them. Second time using this. All right, so what do we got? We have a Diablo blade, brand new blade, 60 uh, teeth per inch. So this is for a smooth finish, only the second time we've used it. One and a half inch thick butcher block. I think you're going to rock it. All I right. Think you're, I think you're out of focus. There you are. <laughs> Well, you set me up pretty good, so. Set you up for success. Yes, you have. Okay. Alrighty. You're good. Yes. You're cutting, I'm holding. 
Okay. Second go around. Look at that. Woo! Mark set me up for complete success. So we did great. All right, so that is awesome. Feel how nice that is. Yeah. All right, well, we've ripped it to length and we've cut it to length. Tani actually went inside. It is really hot. It must be 90, mid 90s here. So she went inside. She wasn't feeling real good. But um, then we went ahead and hit it with some 60 grit sandpaper. And by the way, her cuts only appear to be cleaner and straighter than mine. Yeah. So now we've got to figure out where we want to place the, the so now we got to figure out where we want to install the sink and make the cutout. So I've got a frame. We just got to figure out where to position it on the butcher block. So after uh, Mark and I cut the butcher block, we took it to the van and we just wanted to see how it fit in there to look at it and bring it back. And it looks great. It fits perfectly. Mark made a template for the sink and he's already marked it out on the inside. So you know what that means? It is time to cut the hole for the sink. So let's get to it. So after we lifted the template, we went ahead and put some of this green tape down. We wanna make sure we don't get any tear right. I don't think we will, but the way the, saw, the jigsaw is, is the teeth point up. So as it's pulling out of the wood, there's always a chance it could chip some of the wood. We wanna make sure it doesn't happen. So we've got some green uh, tape laid down. And now what we're gonna do is try to get as, we're gonna stay inside the line, but we're gonna get as close as we can with the jigsaw. The router is really gonna do the bulk of the work, of the finish work. We're gonna get as close as we can with this, and um, that's it. So we'll drill a couple of pilot holes, then we'll cut as close as we can to the line with the jigsaw, and then we will get the whole table reset, and we'll use the router to get right on the line. Mark, what you doing over there? So one thing I noticed on the last cut was that we got some marks from the bottom of the jigsaw, so now I've got some tape um, keeping us from scratching up the wood. So we got our blade nice and sharp. Let's get to drilling some holes and cutting. All right, four holes are drilled. Now it's time to cut, and I'm really nervous again. I don't know why I get nervous, but man. It's a big piece of wood, you know, if you mess up the cut, you gotta start over. So I'm gonna get as close to the line as possible, but I'm gonna stay on the inside. If I can leave just like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch on the inside, the router blade should be able to get it really nice and clean. So let's do it. This, by the way, is why I would not try to cut the hole with a jigsaw. I just don't see how you could possibly get a straight cut. Now we've finished cutting um, a little far from the edges at some point, but at least it's cut. Now with the router, where is it? Now here's the deal with the router. This thing is gonna ride along the edge of the frame and it's gonna cut this wood in the same shape as the frame. The problem is this router is gonna want, as you're, as you're moving it, the router is gonna wanna go like this. It's gonna to wanna to go like this. And then when you do that, the bit will cut into this down here and screw everything up. So we need some kind of platform in the middle at the same height as this that leaves enough room for the bit, yet doesn't let this happen. So we're gonna to try to fashion something out of the piece we just took out. Because if we can somehow fit this in here and we cut it so it's got just enough room for the router bit and it sits even with this, <clears throat> then the router should ride on it. Well, 
we left the table saw begging for mercy, but it managed to cut the butcher block into a rough square. And now I can pretty much fit this rough square in here and leave enough room for the saw, for the router blade, the router bit on all sides. Now the question is how do we support it? So that's gonna take a little ingenuity. So here's what I came up with. I used a, ow, hot. I used a, what the heck are these things called? A uh, Forstner, Forstner bit to make a hole, actually to make kind of a, uh, a depressed hole in the leftover butcher block piece. And I screwed these, the only screws I had the house. So I screwed these big cabinet screws through here. You can see they actually come out the bottom side, but hopefully no one's gonna be judging my screw length choices. Trying to screw this last one in with you guys watching, but it's not working. So hold on a sec. We're gonna put it here. Well, it works. Problem is, I forgot to account for the height of this. So we've actually got to take that up and add another three quarters of an inch below it so but we're getting there So this is what I've ended up with. So the frame is held down by these clamps, the four orange clamps on the outside. The support piece is held in place by the two by material underneath held in place by these blue clamps on the outside. And I've made sure we've got clearance all around for the router to ride. Now, if we can just keep the router straight, it's pretty that's pretty good so now if we can just keep the router straight with the guide running against the uh with the guide running against the outside of the template we should be good router makes a lot of dust, a lot of noise. It's pretty unpleasant to use, to be honest. Ugh. All right, we're gonna look at this together. Wow. Come check this out. Can you see that? That is pretty darn nice. It's got a little bit of roughness right here. I think I skipped with the bit right here, but I could sand that out. Wow. That, uh, that came out pretty nice. Even the corners, the corners are the hard part, but the router guide rolled right over those edges that I made. So let's vacuum and sand. We also want to round off these edges a little bit. That's pretty sure, in fact, all the edges. I think we want to put a round over bit on the router and soften all these edges because these are really sharp, but Oh, there's a sticky part too. Well, hopefully no one will see that. So let's sand. So it is now several hours later. I had to get out of the heat. I was in need of some food 
and definitely in need of a shower after getting all that dust on me. So uh, what we did was we sanded the, um, the countertop down with 60 grit, 80 grit sandpaper and then 150 and then 220. Um, I'm really pleased with how it came out. I think that was a good way to do it. Um, I think you could probably, technically, maybe you could use a router for the whole thing and just do smaller passes, but the router is a little hard to control at times. It can jump on you because of the speed of the bit. So I think setting it up this way worked out really well. And I think this was like 90% preparation and 10% of the actual job. So, um, but it worked out good. I still got to go out there and drill a hole for the faucet and for the water purifier. I'm actually working on dinner for some guests we're having over tomorrow. But I'm gonna leave that cooking and I'm gonna go out to the garage, start drilling. So Tanya has laid out where she wants the faucet to sit. Um, she wants it to sit a little further back because it's kind of a big faucet. She doesn't want the head of it to be way out here. So she's got it sitting back a little bit. I have a one and three eighths inch hole saw that I'm gonna drill through here. Um, and then we'll put a little hole on the side for the water filter. And then we start the polycrylic. I'm just finishing putting on this first coat of polycrylic. There's a lot of ways to finish it. You don't need to use the same stuff we're using. it. Some people use oil. Um, some people will stain it and then use oil or a combination of them. Um, we really like this polycrylic stuff. We use it on our ceiling. We use it on the drawers and all the insides of the cabinets. Really easy to work with and it gives a nice shine and a nice finish to everything. So I was told it was like putting a piece of plastic on top of the butcher block, which is kind of Kind of a nice thought to protect it like that so um, we're going to go ahead we'll probably hit it with three or four coats of this in between each one we'll sand with 220 grit sandpaper finally uh, we'll flip it over do the bottom as well and at the very end i will hit it with some steel wool which is the equivalent of like i don't know 400 or 600 grit sandpaper and we'll call it done so want to get this done by tomorrow since you're supposed to have this done within 48 hours that way we can install the sink and the faucet and get it on the cabinet. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention, I said I was going to round the edges with a round over bit. I didn't have one. I didn't want to go buy one. So basically what I did was when I sanded with the electric sander, I pretty much just kind of tilted on the corners and just kind of made the edges a little bit smoother. So these edges are pretty smooth. Um, the top has been softened. So basically it's just a matter of tilting the sander as you go. So you can do it without the bit. Probably comes out a little nicer with the bit, but Who's gonna know? As long as nobody's cutting their hands on it, I think you're, I think you're good. We don't do a whole lot of van building in the house, but it's so hot outside, I brought this into the kitchen. So this is the countertop. Um, we've got it sitting on top of our sink, and the countertop actually extends about, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch on all directions into the sink. That way when food falls off, it goes directly into the sink. It doesn't get stuck in some crevice over here. So now what I've got to do is lift it up and we're going to attach it with two things. First of all, we're going to hit it with this Supreme silicone. It's supposed to be really good stuff for this thing. I'm not supposed to show you the dirty dishes we have in the sink. Tony doesn't like that. So imagine those aren't there. So we're going to hit it with this first and then we've got these clips that we will use to attach it with. I bought these online. Um, they come with these screw anchors that are meant, I think, for uh, stone. But I'm just gonna use the clip part and I bought some stainless steel lag screws, one inch long that I'll put through the bottom and these will hold the sink up from the bottom. So first the silicone and then these things, we'll put a link to both of them in the description below. So before I took the sink off the butcher block, I made sure the butcher block was positioned right and then I drew underneath it with a red Sharpie and took the sink off. So that's what you see here. So next thing I'm gonna do is apply this caulk. Um, how much caulk do I have to apply? Well, if X is the diameter of the caulk bead and Y is actually, I have no idea. I don't know how much I'm supposed to put. I'm just gonna put a, some of it there and hope it sticks. Well, I thought we were recording the whole thing, but apparently my phone died. But basically what I did was I laid a bead of silicone in here. I uh, pushed the sink down on top of it to kind of spread it out a little bit. Um, then basically I put these clips on here. I've got eight clips, four on each side. 
And like I said, I got rid of the fasteners that came with the clips and I just used these stainless steel lag screws in here. And it seems to be holding them down pretty good. So I'm letting the silicone dry and then we're gonna install the faucet. I'm not sure I like the faucet. I'm not sure Tanya likes the faucet that we have. Um, it's one of those faucets where you pull down the handle, but I wanna get one, I think we both wanna get one with the magnetic clip on it. So I think we're gonna replace the faucet and then we will install it in that hole. And there's gonna be another hole here or there for a water filter. And we will get this thing installed in the van. So we are about to install the butcher block. We have to make a few modifications. So the, the faucet, actually the faucet drain or the stub piece of the faucets wouldn't fit through the butcher block plus this. So we had to cut that portion of it out. Um, we also realized that the butcher block was hitting this molding right here. So we had to make a little cut in the butcher block, which actually went much better than we thought. We thought we were going to just totally screw it up and you really can't even see the cut. So that's it. Let's put it in. It is in. Sits nice and flush. Here's that little part we had to cut, but when you put the frame on there, you won't even see it right over there. So that's it. Everything is cut. Let's go ahead and screw it in. I feel like we need like the theme from Rocky or something playing right now. That'd be cool. watching this video and you want to hum the theme to Rocky, it'll make it really cool. Oh, yeah, like this maneuver. And that, my friends, is a wrap. The butcher block is on top of the cabinet. We've got the kitchen faucet and the water faucet installed, and both of them actually run water. We pressurized the system about two nights ago. Ah! Oh! Water! Crap. We have water. And we were able to get water out of both of them, so we're really excited. We even, even got a water filtration system for the drinking faucet, two-stage system. Um, but again, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us and being with us on this journey. We will be back, probably not next week, but probably the week after. Tani and I are going to the Faroe Islands. Um, if you look on your map north of Iceland, you'll see a little group of islands. That's the Faroe Islands. We are going there for about 10 days to do some photography and some hiking. We are really excited. Uh, but we will be back after that to work on the shower, the water system and a few other things as we start to wrap up this van. So thanks again for joining us. If you haven't already done so, we hope you'll click the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave us a comment below if you want to. We love hearing from you guys and we will talk to you soon.